In this video, we will continue to look at problems about continuous annuities from the Theory of Interest by Stephen Kellison, second edition. We're going to be finding the present value of a payment stream or a continuous annuity, but not with a, with a constant force of interest like we usually do, but instead with a varying force of interest. In fact, this is a declining force of interest. And here's the problem. Find an expression for this thing, an equation for it. That would be the present value of a continuous annuity. You can see with the A bar that emphasizes that it's a present value of a continuous annuity. The N emphasizes this continuous annuity goes on for N uh, periods of time, say N years. And this is the force of interest. It's not a constant. Delta sub T, it's a function of T. It's 1 over 1 plus T. Actually, a more precise symbol for the present value would be to emphasize that that force of interest is varying by putting a delta sub T to the right of the vertical line here. All right, so it would be good, I think, to review what force of interest is. Uh, by definition, force of interest, delta sub t, is the relative rate of change of growth of your money at a partic particular instant in time. If lil a of t is the accumulated amount function, its derivative would be the rate of change of that amount function at time t. By dividing by a of t itself, you are finding the relative rate of change. You can think of this as a percent rate of, rate of change. So again, a of t is the accumulated value or future value at time t of a payment of 1 at time 0. That's what this represents or you could say it's a deposit of one, you're letting your money grow. Uh, the word payment could include the case of a deposit. So that's the definition of the force of interest. It might be helpful to solve this equation for A of t. It's really a differential equation for A of t. The quickest way to find a formula for A of t in terms of delta sub t is to think of this relative rate of change as the derivative of the natural log of A of t. And think about why that's the case. Um, the derivative of natural log of x with respect to x is 1 over x. The derivative of the natural log of a of t with respect to t, therefore, by the chain rule, would be 1 over a of t times the derivative of the inside times a prime of t. That would give you exactly this ratio here. Once you've got this relationship, you can just integrate both sides say from time 0 to time t. And let me go ahead and change the variable of the integration here to something other than t. I usually use a tau, the Greek version of t. I can say the integral from time 0 to time t of delta sub tau would be the integral from time 0 to time t of this thing right here, using tau as the variable, d d tau of natural log of a of tau, d tau. But this integral is easy to do because you're integrating a derivative. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is going to be the natural log of a of t, the upper limit of the integral, minus the natural log of a of 0. However, a of 0, since it's the accumulated value at time 0 of a payment of 1 at time 0, a of 0 is 1, and therefore natural log of a of 0 is 0. And this simplifies to natural log of a of t. And now we can solve for a of t by exponentiation a of t is going to be e raised to the integral from 0 to t of delta sub tau d tau. Let's go ahead and see what that ends up being in the case where delta sub t is 1 over 1 plus t. So I need to integrate from 0 to t 1 over 1 plus tau d tau. That's going to give me natural log of 1 plus tau evaluated from tau equals 0 to tau equals t. When you plug in tau equals 0, you get natural log of 1, which is 0. You only get something new when you plug in tau equals t. So this becomes e to the natural log of 1 plus t, which simplifies to 1 plus t. And what this really shows us is that when the force of interest is this function here, this decreasing function, indicating that the the going rate of interest is declining over time. The intensity of the interest at any moment of time is declining. What you really get is actually simple interest, 
but with a very good interest rate, this would be the same as 1 plus i times t if i equals 1 or 100%. So you're getting simple interest at a 100% interest rate. Sounds real good, but uh, actually in the long run, it still produces less growth in your money than compound interest would. All right, so that's the background, and that is what how we can relate this force of interest to the accumulated amount function, which is going to be helpful ultimately for finding this present value. Let's now go back to thinking about the original problem, thinking about the present value that we are after. The payment stream is still assumed to be one unit of money per unit of time. So we have the time axis here, we have the cash flow axis here. Let's go ahead and assume particular units just to make it easier to conceptualize. We'll imagine times in years and cash flows in dollars per year. Then the assumed amount, it's not stated here, but the assumed cash flow is one dollar per year. And we again want to find the present value of this entire cash flow over n units of time, over n year, years. As we've done in the last couple videos, we can think about a particular moment in time and a tiny amount of time elapsed. The particular amount of time, uh, unit of time here is time t. That's where we're at. And the tiny amount of time elapsed is dt. The present value, or the, the um, actual amount of money that flows during that uh, tiny time interval would be the cash flow, $1 per year, times the number of years, which is dt years. So this simplifies to dt dollars. And then the present value, the tiny present value of that tiny amount of, of money, discounted in time back to time zero. Well, in previous videos, we've written this as v to the t, where v is the discount factor. But that's assuming v is constant. And with a force of interest that's not constant, v is not going to be constant. In general, it turns out a better way to view the discount factor here is not as v to the t, but, a, a, but as um, a of t to the negative 1 power, the reciprocal of a of t. Some books write this in such a way that it looks like the inverse function of a of t, but it's not the inverse function of a of t. It's, it's reciprocal, and it's better to write it like this. So in the context of this problem, since a of t is 1 plus t, that means its reciprocal is 1 over 1 plus t. And that's what I've got to multiply dA by, which simplifies again to dt, to get the tiny present value of this tiny amount of money, the present value being evaluated at time zero. So this is going to, let me go ahead and write the generic form here first. It would be A of t to the negative one dt, and this would be in dollars. And for this particular problem, that's one over one plus t dt. And now that's the thing that you need to integrate to get the final answer. So a n, and I'm going to go ahead and write the delta sub t here, bar is found by integrating from 0 to n 1 over 1 plus t by adding up these things via integration. Once again, we get a natural log involved. We're going to get natural log of 1 plus t. Evaluated t goes from 0 to n. Once again, when you plug in 0, you get natural log of 1, which is 0. So the final answer here is natural log of 1 plus n. That is equal to the present value of this income stream under this decreasing force of interest. This is still an increasing function. I mean, you could graph this as a function of n if you liked, and it would look something like this. It's increasing concave down. Um, what, the reason it's increasing is because you're getting paid for a longer amount of time as n gets bigger. All right, and that's the end of this video. Actually, it's not quite the end of this video. I thought it would be good to add on a little explanation about this present value discount factor. Let me go ahead and write it up here under the accumulated value function. You can interpret its reciprocal as the present value at time zero of a payment of 1 at time t. And if you think about it and say with an example, it makes sense to, to uh, that these things would be related to each other and, and have these kinds of meanings. Uh, for example, if you imagine your money growing 
say by 50% over a certain amount of time, from time zero to time, you know, whatever, time two or something, an investment of one at time zero, a payment of one at time zero will grow to 1.5 at time t. What would the present value of a payment of one at time t be? What's the present value at time zero? It's the reciprocal of this, about 67 cents. 67 cents right now, if it grew by 50% over that same amount of time, is going to grow to 1 over that same amount of time. That's why it makes sense to say that the reciprocal of A of t can be interpreted as the present value at time 0 of a payment of 1 at time t. And that, again, is the thing we need to multiply dt by to get the tiny present value of this tiny payment at time t. And that's the thing that we integrate to get the final answer.